Friends, hello again. Today we're going to talk about uh, the ketogenic diet and its effect on cancer. In fact, it's not about a ketogenic diet. I don't really care about it. I'm not crazy about it. I'm not crazy about all these weirdos on the web who uh, advocate the use of fat. It's just that uh, there is there are sometimes mistakes made in clinical science by thinking that uh, absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Uh, there are some trials that are very difficult to perform and and they so they don't perform it because there's no incentive uh, very low compliance for the ketogenic diet uh, in cancer and very difficult to do <laughs> anything randomized uh, and what's worse also it cannot be a double blind so uh, the uh, uh, so there are not that many experiments uh, on on in some areas, and and people think that hey, you know, we don't have experiments, and they interpret it as it doesn't work. So let let's look at the situation here. Uh, this, by the way, the post on um, the website of the MD Anderson Cancer Center by some doctor who made the mistake by thinking that. Uh, this is a myth. Instead of saying this is untested, we don't have data. Now, why, why don't we have data about the effect of ketogenic diet on cancer? Although there's a lot of theoretical research on the Warburg effect, it's simply because um, uh, the, it's very difficult to do a, a, a standard uh, randomized controlled experiment. And and compliance is usually very low because I, I don't know if you've tried the keto diet. I tried it for three days once. <laughs> you know, really, after a while, you can't take it. You want to eat a banana or something. So, uh, so let's look at the data. Okay, the the you know, the glioblastoma is uh, has a low survival, three year survival rate. Uh, it is uh, very low. So they had eighteen people. Of the eighteen patients, six adhere to the uh, ketogenic diet for six months. Now, now six months was their, uh, their <laughs> basically because compliance is usually low, six months was their not very aggressive, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, application period. So, and the remaining 12, you know, did not use it. Out of the 12, 11 died out of 12. Out of the ones who applied the ketogenic diet for six months, after three years, four out of six survived. So what effect does it have on the, on the three-year survival rate? Well, very simple. Uh, the, the, if I use the maximum ignorance probability, it looks like it is 73%. Uh, it's a 73% uh, effective, OK? And uh, I won't get into the, the maximum ignorance probability, but we can compare uh, just the methodology I use using something more organic than p-values, p-value equivalent. You tell yourself, if the distribution <laughs> had <coughs> 1 over 12 survival rate, what's the probability of having an outcome uh, for surviving? <laughs> well... It's tiny, below one percent, and uh, and of course five surviving is, is tiny. So it tells you that the result is statistically uh, uh, significant. You know, when you compute p-values, the n doesn't enter; that's separate. So this is very promising. Now, now this message isn't so much to tell you to use the ketogenic diet for uh, for cancer. It's just as it's, it's a methodology thing that doctors should be very careful about the statements they make. Uh, I've encountered this in many cases in cardiology, uh, where things have not been tested, and they just tell you that it doesn't work. You know, the clinical uh, knowledge is very important, but sometimes uh, you know it's rife with biases because that's. The way it works, it's needed. Biases are needed to make the think function properly. So uh, thank you for listening to me, except for watching this, and, and to the next one. Bye now.